So I guess during quarantine, one of like the big things that I've been like doing recently is cooking and baking. Just trying a whole bunch of different things. Uh, I'm not much of a baker, honestly. I think like this, the most that I've ever done is box cake. But I'm doing something a little different here, you know. Adding chocolate jello and then, what is that, cacao. <laughs> and... I think one of the most difficult things about doing it now, doing a documentary now, is that you don't have the freedom to choose a wide variety of subjects. Because I didn't want to like do something about me, but I guess you know it can't be helped. And one of the, like the little bits that I struggle with was the fact that I was gonna have to film myself. And I don't really like looking at myself a lot. And so... <laughs> the good thing about this is that I didn't have to like... Look at myself in the editing room all the time. I think I would have killed myself if that went on too long. But thankfully... This is fine. You can barely see my hands. My hands look alright. I think that's a problem though, honestly. Just not being able to look at yourself it doesn't bother me too much but like when i'm faced with it and i can't escape i think that's when the problem starts and you know it's fun though this is fun you know it it takes away some stress i don't know it makes me feel like i'm doing something with myself you know i'm able to what's it called I'm able to be productive, I'm able to produce things, you know? And it's fun that way, I think. I think a lot of people at this time need something to like, not so much be a crutch, but just more, more of a distractor. And I think with cooking and stuff, that's, that's pretty much what you do. And it's, and it's really, um, it's a good utility. You know, um, I don't remember the word, but it's a good, it's a good way to, you know, smooth things out with yourself. You know, it's a meditation device as well. You, you put all your effort into one thing for like an hour or less, you know, preparing it, making it, uh, and then you send it out to the world to be tasted. And then, you know, I think it's a beautiful thing when you're baking because it starts off not looking a lot like the end result. And then if you're like me, you forgot to record yourself putting all the ingredients for buttercream frosting into the bowl. And then if you're a cool cat that knows how to bake, you'll also realize that I wasn't supposed to put everything in the bowl like this. But you know, I think... But it turned out fine. And that's one of the things I guess you can learn from this is that even though you make mistakes in the beginning, it doesn't necessarily mean that the end product is going to be bad. Although with baking, I guess it's more of a science because you're going to want to weigh most of your ingredients. With box cake, I think it's you get that extra bit of freedom. And I think I kind of enjoy that. I don't want to be like bogged down too much. I like this right here. This is, I had a lot of problem with it. <laughs> because I just don't like looking at myself. And you know, it looks fine. You know, she's a little, she's a little wrinkled, a little cracked, but once you put frosting on her, it'll be all right. <laughs> This is the nerve-wracking part because it could all just go south. And then thankfully, you know, I'm able to get it on the thing. And I've never frosted a thing before. I've never frosted a cake before. I've never made a cake in this configuration. Uh, my mom's having her birthday Sunday, and so it's going to be a little... 
Oh, well, thing. I'm probably gonna decorate it a little more. Well, like I said, one of the things that I guess you probably learned from cooking is that no matter how many mistakes you make while you're making the same thing, while you're making the same thing, it doesn't matter because in the end you can just improvise as much as you can and you'll end up with a product that is pretty satisfying.